Mavs fans, we are less than 700 people away from reaching a milestone here on the channel of 20,000 subs. And I'll tell you this, if we get there by the end of the week, once Harrison Grams comes back to the United States from overseas, I'm going to make him shave his beard if we get to 20,000 subs. But in all seriousness, I'm going to back that up, by the way, when the Mavs make a move, and I feel like something is festering because they need to fulfill that need for Jalen Brunson leaving, we'll be the first ones to let you know. That's why you hit that sub button. Without further ado, let's start today's show. Welcome into Dallas Mavericks today by Chat Sports. Chase Senior here with you. Hope all of you MFFLs are having a great start to your week. We have a great show on tap for you today, so let's hop right into it. So I want to start off with this tweet from Dalton Trigg. He said this, Source tells DallasBasketball.com that the Mavs are expected to be in attendance for Dennis Smith Jr.'s private workout in Las Vegas. Now, when you ask me if the Mavs need him, or if they don't, I don't think they really have a need for DSJ. I don't think there's any need for a reunion. Obviously, his career here was really up and down, really Jekyll and Hyde. Pretty good in that rookie campaign. Then after that, really just did go downhill. And from that point on early in his career, his NBA career has been that of a journeyman. You take a look at the numbers that he put forward last year with the Portland Trailblazers as they signed him late in the process. They needed some depth at that guard spot. Here's what he was able to do. And I know Chauncey Billups was high on him, but unfortunately, the injuries over time, I think, have zapped him from his athleticism. Five and a half points per game, three and a half assists. He shot less than 42% from the floor and a poultry and cold and frigid 22% from three-point range. Now, several years ago, people were like, Luka Doncic, Dennis Smith Jr., they're really good friends. They're going to be really good as a one-two punch. That did not end up being the case. And you saw shades with that athleticism at NC State early years in the NBA of Dennis Smith Jr. maybe being Russell Westbrook light, but was never able to evolve, kind of like Russ, was a really good athlete like Russ, but he had his offensive shortcomings, which were way too glaring. So I don't think the Mavs really have a need for DSJ on this roster. And if you're bringing him in, what are you going to get from a guy who really didn't do much for a subpar Portland team last year? And if he's getting DNP'd all the time, I I think there are better options out there. But those are my opinions. I want to ask you this. If you think the Mavs should bring back Dennis Smith Jr., I want you to type 1 in the comment section. For those of you unfamiliar, maybe you're a little bit too young because we have people tuned in of all ages from all across the globe. That is the number he wore with Dallas back in the day. From DSJ, a guard who I'm not high on, to Cam Thomas, a guard who I'm really high on. Liked him coming out of LSU, reminded me offensively of a guy who could really just go on a hot streak, kind of like Lou Williams, but I think in the long run, Cam Thomas can become an overall better basketball player than Sweet Lou. New York Post reporting Mavericks reportedly made a concrete offer to acquire the Nets guard. And last year as a rookie, he had a couple of really good moments. There was a game on national television against the New York Knicks in which the Nets were down 20 plus points and Cam Thomas put the team on his back. And offensively, he can do that. But if you drafted Jaden Hardy, Cam Thomas was actually my pro comp for Jaden Hardy. They're very similar players. They can go on these hot and cold streaks. They could pour it up and look fantastic, but at the same time, they could go through some of these cold spells. You look at the numbers from last year, pretty good for a guy who really didn't get that much run. Eight and a half points per game, shot it about seven and a half times per night, connected on about 43% of his field goals, 27% from beyond the arc. That number certainly has to increase, but this guy has elite scoring ability, and sometimes he's considered a one-trick Boney as just a scorer, and that's kind of what Jaden Hardy is, who really had an impressive summer league debut as he was fine and twined from everywhere and looked to be an NBA caliber scorer. Here's what Adam Caporn said about uh, Cam Thomas. He's the Nets G League and summer league coach. 
Cam's gotten so much better. I'm really proud of him. He's working really hard. He can score. He's an elite scorer. He's going to score, and we're going to put the ball in his hands. I know he's really grown as a defender, and he's a guy that he'll just make a lot of good decisions. Underrated passer and a willing passer. He's done a good job leading this group the last couple of days. He's practiced really hard, had a great attitude. The leadership responsibilities are the things that grow the most in the second year. He's gotten better, I will say that. So basically, going back to my original point, Jane Hardy, Cam Thomas, very similar players. Now, maybe this Mavericks offer happened before Hardy, who some had pegged as an early second round draftee. The Mavs really liked him. They had a first round grade on him. So does drafting Hardy really just throw away trading for Cam Thomas making any sense? Now, the summer league coach is saying he's a good passer. Steve Nash saying we'd like to see him be a better passer and pass the ball more and be more willing in that regard. And Cam Thomas kind of laughed that off. That was a really good social media video circulating over the weekend. But I just don't think this trade really makes all that much sense. Now, here is a trade idea. You rid yourselves of the bust that is Josh Green. You also have to trade a second round pick so that the Nets take on Josh Green, who got sparingly used throughout the playoffs. And frankly, he's lacking confidence in between the years. I just don't know what his long-term NBA future is. I do know, at the very least, what Cam Thomas can be. A scorer coming in off the bench, especially if you're starting Spencer Dinwiddie, which on Friday, Jason Kidd said that's probably going to be the plan as of now, as well as starting JaVale McGee and Christian Wood. So that's the trade idea that we just showed you with that. Let me just ask for your feedback in the comment section right now. Should the Mavs make a trade for Cam Thomas knowing they drafted Jaden Hardy? Give me a T for trade or a P for pass. Get that comment section popping and you get in the shoes of Nico Harrison. Now, as I said off the top, less than 700 people away from 20,000 subs. If we get there by the end of the week, I'm going to make Harrison Graham shave his beard. We're bringing you the latest Mavericks news and rumors all off season long but also all season long. So join the squad of MFFLs here at Chat Sports and hit that sub button right now. Now to what Bleacher Report had to say about some of these trade ideas that could save some free agency losers. Now, I like what the Mavs did by bringing in JaVale McGee. You fulfill a need, you bring in a rim protector, a guy who has championship pedigree with the Lakers as well as the Warriors, but losing Jalen Brunson, a massive loss for this team. There's no question about that. So what Bleacher Report did, okay, Mavs, a free agency loser, what's a trade they can make to kind of just absorb that blow to a certain degree. And this one, not bad. Mavericks received Malik Beasley as well as Mike Conley. Too big of a contract for me considering the player that he is or lack thereof at this point. Jazz receive Josh Green, Dwight Powell, Tim Hardaway Jr., and a 2025 first-round pick. Honestly, I'm not making the trade. I'd rather have that depth as compared to having Beasley and Conley, but Bleacher Report saying this, Dallas might be banking on a renaissance from THJ following his left foot injury, but jettisoning him, uh, what is, how did, did I say that word correctly? Jettisoning? Okay, yeah, I thought that was, uh, it sounded funny coming out of my mouth. Uh, you know, I did study journalism at college, but sometimes, you know, these words are tough when it has a plethora of syllables. There you go. I made up for it with the use of plethora. But moving him, here we go, in favor of Beasley and Conley makes too much sense. Beasley is a reasonable facsimile of THJ. I hit that one on the head. With more pop in his contract and come off the books next summer, which is a team option. People may be down on the 34-year-old Mike Conley given how his playoffs ended, but he was genuinely good during the regular season and can play besides Luka Doncic. The Mavs still emerge from this deal as a cap sheet positive, even after factoring in $14.3 million that he's guaranteed out of $22.7 million for 2023-2024. I've never seen Bleacher Report use such large words, but good job by them. You look at the numbers side by side for Conley and Beasley, pretty solid players, like I said. But Mike Conley, given what his contract is and the level of play and the fact that in the playoffs he really doesn't move the needle all that much for me, at least over the last couple of years, he is not. That's a little bit concerning. And if you bring him in, as well as Beasley, do you have a little bit of a log jam at that guard spot? I'm just not sure what the rotation would be and how much you can rely on Conley. Now, Conley, he's a veteran guard. 
he can still eat minutes. You're able to at least work something out financially to a certain degree. As for Beasley, had a down year with Minnesota in 2021-2022, but I think there's a better player in there, and he's proven that throughout his career. Uh, from 2019 to 2021, this guy was certainly getting numbers. 20 points per game, 45.5% from the deck, pretty solid three-point shooter as well. Even though he did have a bad year last year, again, I think he can rebound to a certain degree. Effective field goal percentage, very good at 56+. plus. So a little bit of an analytical darling for an organization in Dallas that has put an emphasis on that over time. So let's show the trade here one more time. Who do you think wins it? I wouldn't do it, but let me know what you think of it. Who wins it? D-A-L for the Mavs, U-T-A for the Utah Jazz let us know right now in the comment section. As for Jaden Hardy, I alluded to this earlier, and we were here inside the Chat Sports studios and at the office watching the game on Friday, and I had made that Cam Thomas comparison because Jaden Hardy and Thomas have very similar games. Like, there are moments when you're watching them play and you're like, this guy can average 20, 25 points per game. Then the next game, they get a little bit cold from the field, and you're like, okay, I see why he's sometimes sparingly used, and then other times he just lights the world on fire. As for what he did on Friday, by the way, an absolute crime that the Mavs have played just once since then when all these other teams are playing three days in a row. 28 points, three dimes, 9 of 19 from the field, 2 of 7 from 3. He really has almost every offensive move in his toolbox for a scoring guard. He had that little sidestep, step back. He was doing that little hezzy turnaround and just that hezzy dribble to kind of gain some steam to try to get to the rack. Is not scared to let it fly from anywhere on the floor. Heat check city for him. He showed legitimate NBA scoring ability. Now, of course, there are going to be some negatives for a player who was a top five recruit coming out of high school, elected to go the G League route instead of going to a premium program. And those concerns are turnovers and a little bit of a loose handle just gets a little bit loose with it from time to time. And his decision making, it can be a little bit lackluster. But throughout the course of an NBA game and an NBA season, he's going to be able to learn, and those are things that you can improve upon. I'm willing to build on the offensive foundation and then work out the kinks and work out the wrinkles like the turnovers and the loose handle for a guy who, frankly, is going to handle the basketball a lot at the NBA level. Great Hardy's debut in the NBA Summer League. Can't wait to see him once more. A, B, C, D, or F. Go back to school, get those grades in, and as always, thanks for watching the show. You want to see H. Graham shave that beard upon coming back from Italy? Let's get to 20K by the end of the week.